Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're all doing well out there. Uh, today I'm having a bit of a rest day. I've been riding almost every day. So I thought I would give you a run through today of my bike over here. Uh, a lot of you have been asking questions about my setup, what I'm running for races. And even though it's a giant Rain 1.5, I, I bought it as standard. But I, I updated a lot of the components. So today I'm going to give you a run through of what I changed, why I changed, and yeah basically my bike check video so let's go check it out so yeah this is my giant rain 1.5 i bought it completely as standard about four months ago uh, since then i've upgraded a lot of things on it of course one thing that didn't change is the frame it's a large size i was stuck between medium and large maybe medium is more fun to ride but large seems to suit me better it's got the dropper post the giant dropper which actually i'm in love with before i always ran the rock shock uh, some issues with it but this one is super simple cable actuated uh, no problem so far and yeah it's perfect so if we move on down to the shock it's a Fox X2 160 millimeter and also running 160 millimeter Fox 36 fork on the front slightly different offset angle is customized for the giant frame uh, in the rear shock, I've got it totally full of four volume spacers from Fox and I run at 230 PSI. It's quite hard, but a lot of the enduro sections are really pedally, so I, I don't want it to sink too far into the travel when I'm really pushing through a section. Uh, what the volume spacer does is it takes out some of the air volume, so you get a steeper ramp up curve. Instead of going quite flat, so you just sink into the travel, on the bigger hits it will really ramp up and kick in kick in as such so that's my suspension setup moving on to the cockpit this is actually one thing that i didn't really change at the minute it's the regular truvative stem that comes on the giant with the giant bars uh, the grips i changed to the ergon enduro grip it's just changed those recently quite nice giant grips were also nice but then on the giant grips they come with a lock ring on the end and I start to feel a bit of pressure on my hands so I moved to the Ergon and it's helped quite a little bit so one of the biggest changes I made to the bike when I got it was the brakes came with Shimano XT brakes with the vented ice rotor uh, they were pretty good actually but I, I hate the fluctuating bite point so I moved on to the Hope brakes. I was torn between the Hope and the Magura. In the end, I went for Hope. I'm English, so stick with the English made stuff. Uh, I went for the M4 version. Uh, one 200 rotor at the front, 180 at the back, and loads of power and modulation. What I love on these levers is that you can control also the reach and the bite point. On the Shimano lever, you can control the reach, but not really so much the bite point. And these levers they give you everything so you can really dial in how you want them to feel uh, I got them in blue I thought it goes well with the bike and matches my pedals also so yeah bit of a bike tart I bought the Crank Brothers Mallet E the enduro version uh, clipped in pedals actually being a trials rider I've always been used to flat pedals so for me to move to the clip pedals was a big step I mean I used them on the road bike before but when you're on the enduro race and you come up to some tracks that you don't know can be a little bit tricky in the clipping pedals but they're a massive benefit when you're going through the rough stuff and these crank brothers they give a nice amount of float uh, so don't get any problems with my knees sometimes on the shimano ones where my foot was really fixed into place i start to get pain on the lateral side of my knee but so far with these uh, crank brother pedals they've been perfect I had some issue to set up the cleat on my shoes. I'm running the gyro chamber. Uh, first race, I didn't really pay enough time to get them set up correctly. I had trouble clicking in, but now I fine tuned it and running really well. I totally updated the gearing system. It came with Shimano XT, one by chain set, but one by 11. And uh, I did a race in the Alps. And to be fair, some of the climbs were pretty steep and I didn't have enough gears. Maybe I'm not fit enough, but re really tough climbs. And I changed it to the Shram Eagle XO group set, the 1x12 at the rear, 10 speed sprocket up to 50, 
and at the front I even upgraded to a 34 tooth originally it was 32 but I thought I have the extra gears on the back so 34 on the front will give me a bit more speed on the flat sections uh, honestly it's the best gear system I've ever used uh, really lifesaver having that 52 sprocket there when I'm out training I try not to go in it to make myself work a bit harder but in a race where you want to save the energy for your legs it's it's perfect uh, don't need to push so hard up the climbs uh, yeah I love it cranks cranks are still the same which came on the bike 175 mil Shimano I would probably like to go a little bit shorter to get more ground clearance uh, but it's fine another thing I also changed when I got the bike was the rear wheel actually I changed it after around six weeks it came with the giant rim and uh, DT Swiss hub or four other DT another thing I changed when I got the bike was the rear wheel actually I changed it after around six weeks it came with the giant rim and giant branded hub I had a lot of issues with the cones coming loose and yeah not not such a wide rim as this uh, new DT Swiss EX511 uh, and the hub the hub I changed to Hope Hope Pro 4 uh, again in blue color to match everything it's got to be matchy matchy uh, coming from trials I'm used to really quick engagement on the hubs with freewheel with 108 or 120 engagement points I feel like on the giant hub I really miss this so that was my decision to go with the Hope uh, Pro 4 hub. It's not such a popular choice, but honestly the Hope stuff, it's bulletproof. The warranty is awesome, so if you have a problem, you can send it back to them, get it serviced. And English company, so I love it. Uh, yeah, that's it for the rear wheel and tire setup. I also changed, it came with Schwab tires, not the most expensive one. So I, I updated to Maxxis, it's something I also know well from my trials career. Uh, I went for the Aggressor on the back, 2.3, and it's a double ply version. Uh, for me in the Enduro race, it's not worth to run a single ply tire, risk the chance of the puncher. Uh, so that's why I went to dub, double ply. And it's also good because it doesn't squash out so much when you run at low pressure, which a single wall tire would do. I also go with the Maxxis on the front, this time the Minion downhill front, but on the front I'm only running single single wall, the EXO casing, not the double down casing like on the back. This one is 2.5 to get the extra grip through the corner. I like it. I even think to try on the back, but the, the aggressor is really quick on the back wheel, especially on the climbs, not so much drag. So maybe this is perfect, but I will get the Maxxis Minion to go on the back and see if it improves at all. So there you go, that's basically my bike setup. Uh, the things that I didn't mention, like the saddle, the headset, they're uh, standard giant things. The saddle is fine, I don't see any need to update it. Although I did have a little accident here in Asha a few weeks ago on one of the races. I had a bad crash and a uh, tree pierced through the saddle. But it's not so big so I don't change it yet. I wish I could change my finger because it still hurts from the race. Uh, I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up like down below. Uh, if you want to see some more of my stuff, there's a playlist here. And also if you want to subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. You can click up here and uh, keep up to date with my videos and racing season. So thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy it and take care.